Welcome back everyone to the deep dive. You know how we love to get below the surface of things and today we're going to talk about something that hits everybody right in their wallets. Inflation. But we're not talking about the usual, you know, buy gold or buy Bitcoin to, you know, protect yourself from inflation. Right. We're going to go a little bit deeper and we're going to look at how inflation actually affects the way people invest and how that in turn even affects how certain types of stocks perform. Really interesting stuff. Yeah, so the the paper that we're looking at today is called The Inflation Gamble. And uh, it's by Bonaparte, Corniotis, Kumar, and Voss. And it just came out in November of last year. Yeah, I actually thought this was one of the more interesting papers to come out recently, just because I think a lot of people can relate to this anecdotally, but they've done the research to back it up. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. So, you know, one of the, the first things that they talk about in this paper is this idea of when inflation is high, people start to feel poor. Mm -hmm. And we all know that, right? We go to the grocery store, things are more expensive. Right. Gas is more expensive. So how does that actually then translate into changes in investor behavior? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the core of the paper, right? The idea is that inflation triggers this feeling of loss for people, right? Your, your purchasing power is eroding away. Yeah. And psychologically that pushes people to maybe take on more risk because if you're feeling like you're losing money maybe you're more likely to take a gamble to try to get it back so it's almost like a behavioral finance thing where you know you're trying to like make up for that loss that you're feeling by going for maybe a riskier bet in the market yeah and what's cool is they don't just stop at the theory they actually have evidence of this they looked at google trends data and they found that during times of high inflation searches for gambling lottery even sports betting all spiked up. So people were literally going online and searching for these things when inflation was high. That's right. So that's pretty interesting. They were thinking about it. Yeah. And it wasn't just kind of a one off correlation either. They also looked at state lottery sales across the U.S. Oh, wow. And you know what they found? States that had higher than average inflation saw bigger increases in per capita lottery revenue. Wow. That's pretty compelling. So people are actually putting their money where their mouth is or where their Google searches are, right? They are. And to, to really kind of seal the deal, they even looked at a financial index that measures aggregate risk aversion in the market. Okay. And this index actually shows that as inflation goes up, people become less risk averse. So, okay, we've got people, you know, searching for gambling more online. We've got them buying more lottery tickets. We've got a fancy financial index telling us that they're feeling, you know, more risky. But how does this then translate to the actual stock market? Right. So that's where the paper gets really interesting. They talk about this idea of what they call lottery type stocks. OK. So think about these as the, the stocks that are really volatile, really high risk, high reward potential. Got it. So they're kind of like the lottery tickets of the stock market. Exactly. Yeah. They have a small chance of a huge payoff, but also a big chance of you know losing a lot of money. So if everyone's getting this, this feeling like they want to gamble more and they're looking to the stock market, wouldn't that then push up the price of these lottery type stocks? Well, you would think so, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. The researchers actually found that these lottery type stocks, and especially the ones that are really sensitive to inflation, they actually tend to perform worse during periods of high inflation. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that people are taking on more risk because of inflation and maybe buying up these lottery type stocks, but then those stocks actually end up doing worse. That's right. Yeah. It's kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, that seems backwards. It is, but that's kind of where the, the psychology meets the market behavior. What happens is those stocks get temporarily overpriced because of all the extra demand from people trying to, you know, gamble their way out of feeling poor. Right. But eventually reality sets in. Yeah. And those stocks tend to correct downwards. So it's almost like a bubble that it eventually bursts. It is very similar to that. Yeah. People get caught up in the excitement, but then the, you know, the fundamentals of the market kind of catch up. 
Exactly. And and the paper actually backs this up with some pretty compelling data. Right. They found that the difference in performance between these volatile lottery type stocks and say more stable, less risky stocks yeah. could be over 1% per month when inflation is a factor. 1% a month. Yeah. That's not just some small little academic finding. This is something that could really affect your portfolio. So if you're an everyday investor listening to this, this is important information for you to know. You got to be careful about chasing those risky stocks when inflation is high. Right. I mean, think about it this way. They found that this effect was even stronger in companies that have a lot of retail investors. Oh, interesting. So those are the everyday people who are maybe more prone to feeling that pinch of inflation and then acting on it. So maybe more prone to that gambling urge. That's right. But OK, let's say I'm a savvy investor. I understand this whole inflation gamble thing. Wouldn't I just short those overpriced stocks and make a killing? Ah, uh, well, see, that's where things get a little bit trickier. It's not as simple as it might seem at first glance. While those lottery type stocks do get temporarily overpriced, you know, kind of caught up in that that frenzy, it takes time for the market to sort of realize this and correct itself. Yeah, that's not like a, you know, quick buy low, sell high kind of situation. Not exactly. Yeah. No, the, the researchers actually found that this correction can take several months. OK, so so that makes it a lot trickier to kind of time the market and, and take advantage of this. Yeah, it does. And honestly, that that delayed reaction makes the whole thing even more fascinating from an economic perspective, because it shows that markets aren't always perfectly efficient. Right. They don't always react instantly like we might expect them to. Exactly. So for our listeners out there who, you know, aren't economists and aren't, you know, super into the, the nitty gritty of market dynamics, why should they care about this whole inflation gamble thing if they can't just use it to make a quick buck? That's a good question. I think the, the most important thing is awareness, mm -hmm. you know, understanding how inflation can influence not just the market, but our own psychology. That's a huge advantage for any investor. I see what you mean. It's almost like having a, a secret weapon against, you know, our own potentially bad decisions. Exactly. It's about recognizing those biases that we all have and, and trying to mitigate them. It helps us separate that emotional decision making from a more, you know, solid investment strategy. So it's about, you know, having a more informed perspective on the market, especially during times when things are uncertain and inflation is high. Exactly. And it's about recognizing that inflation isn't just about, you know, prices going up. It's about this whole psychological game that it plays on us as investors. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. The inflation gamble is really about understanding those hidden forces that are affecting our financial decisions. Right. And, and, you know, another interesting thing they looked at in the paper was how this inflation gamble plays out differently depending on, you know, how easy it is to arbitrage those mispriced stocks. OK, so for those of us who, you know, aren't, you know, Wall Street wizards, what exactly does arbitrage mean? So arbitrage is basically when sophisticated investors, you know, the big guys, they try to profit from price differences in the market. So in this case, you might expect these investors to see those overpriced lottery stocks and kind of bet against them, which would drive the prices back down. OK, so they're kind of like the grown-ups in the room trying to keep things in check. Right, exactly. But what the researchers found was that when it was more expensive or more difficult for these investors to do this arbitrage, you know, maybe because of training costs or regulations or whatever, the inflation gamble effect was actually even stronger. Oh, so if it's harder for the grown-ups to intervene, the, you know, the kids can kind of run wild with this inflation gamble. Exactly. It just highlights how complex and interconnected financial markets really are. It's not just about simple supply and demand. There's psychology, there's regulation, there's even, you know, things like trading costs that are all influencing how prices move. So it sounds like we need to be really, really aware of all these different dynamics if we want to make smart investment decisions. Absolutely. Relying on simple explanations or just, you know, following the crowd, that can be really dangerous, especially during times of economic uncertainty. So while we started with this idea of, you know, inflation making people want to gamble, it's actually led us to some pretty important insights about, you know, how markets work and how our own psychology can play a role in our financial choices. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I really appreciated about this paper. It's not just about you know, here's a quick tip to make money. It's about understanding those deeper forces that are at play. And speaking of challenging our assumptions, I have a question for our listeners out there. Think about right. this. If you knew inflation was going to be high for the next year, would you be tempted to try your luck with these lottery type stocks, even knowing that the odds are probably stacked against you? Ooh, good one. What does that tell you about your own psychology when it comes to money and risk? Something to think about. Yeah, for sure. It's easy to say, oh, I would never do that. But when you're 
actually faced with that situation, it's a lot harder than you might think. And knowing about this inflation gamble, it can help us make you know smarter decisions, avoid some of those costly mistakes, and maybe even you know sleep a little better at night. Absolutely. That peace of mind is priceless. So thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the fascinating world of inflation and investor behavior. 